Just like many of you, I've had high hopes for the iPad Pro ever since they were redesigned in 2018, and especially in 2021 when Tim Cook dropped from the ceiling like a spy and put that powerful M1 chip into the incredibly thin iPad chassis, and the iPad actually performed great at least in benchmarks. They also gave it a Thunderbolt port and up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, making it a full-on desktop replacement powerhouse, especially paired with the excellent Magic Keyboard. But Apple screwed all of that up repeatedly and frustrated so many of us who spent way too much money on a glorified tablet, which ends up costing more than a MacBook after you get it set up. All because of corporate greed, in my opinion, trying to maximize every dollar that they can drain from us. So why am I excited for the upcoming M3 iPad Pro? Well, there are a few major reasons I'll explain, but everything is changing now. And not because Tim decided to be gracious all of a sudden, but because we are no longer putting up with this and the proof is in the sales dropping and dropping with a 30% sales decrease in just the last year. Apple has been trying to keep iPad had revenue up by continually increasing prices, but it is no longer working since even with the price hikes, they keep making less money. Honestly, we should have spoken with our wallets earlier, but now they have no choice but to pivot and give us what we've wanted all along, including some smaller hardware fixes for some things that just didn't make sense, and finally allow these incredible thousand dollar slabs to actually become computers like they advertised them to be in 2018. If you're gonna say that something is new tech that can replace the old way we did it, actually make it better and easier like we've gotten with many smart home products. Now, as you know, vacuuming and mopping sucks because it takes forever and with my kids, we'd have to do it daily, but we practically never do anymore since I bought a Narwhal. And you can too with the new Frio X Plus, which is the best robot vacuum under 400 bucks. These new models are amazing with the genius one-sided brush and the new bag system System, meaning I rarely have to touch them. The X Ultra is not in everybody's budget, so I was shocked to see that the new Frio X Plus brings the certified true zero tangle brush and self-contained dust processing, along with a super strong 7800PA suction that won't leave anything behind, and obstacle avoidance that actually works, as well as mopping capabilities with regular pads or disposable pads so you don't need to wash them in a robot for under 400. Guys, I've been loving this new tech where I could just toss the bag after seven weeks instead of emptying weekly and never having to detangle hair from a brush. And for a limited time, you can get it for just 339 bucks. Just use the links down below or search on Google or Amazon. Thanks to Narwhal for sponsoring this video. Now I've made multiple videos covering iPad OS when these powerful iPads came out and they got tons of views because people were dying to have iPad finally be let loose. But like I mentioned, the ball kept being dropped because even though iPad OS was a bit more flexible than iOS, overall, I think it was much more of a marketing play stating that iPad software is its own beast. But instead of giving us a full desktop experience, they put in more effort to create new multitasking setups that in many ways are nowhere near as good as what you get with Samsung DeX. And the thing is, Apple could do it way better. And based on the info that we are getting, it seems like they are actually working on it, but with a few tricks up their sleeve, which I will cover. Now, unlike Windows and Android, Apple has the unique capability to control all aspects of the user experience, which is why so many of us were expecting better. Back in 2018, when Apple announced that they're gonna stop supporting 32-bit apps in macOS, it gave us a minor glimpse of the future, and then when we got news of Apple putting basically upgraded iPad chips into MacBooks, it all made sense. The transition overall went really smooth and gave Apple the ability to run full macOS on an iPad, especially in 2021 when the iPad literally started using the same exact chip, memory, 
and app code that you can use in a MacBook. And on the Mac, Apple not only started to allow full iPad apps to be ran, but they also changed macOS to look and operate much more like the mobile software. But on the flip side, not much was done for iPad. And after so many years of rumors of at least pro apps coming to iPad OS, Apple didn't do that. Instead, they created a whole new version of Final Cut that was a lot more limiting and that cost five bucks a month. Man, that was frustrating. And after a few months, I ended up canceling my subscription. So why am I actually optimistic this time around? Well, 2023 was the first year ever where Apple didn't launch a new iPad, and there have been delays after delays after delays. We've had a few reasons pop up, but the big one is the actual software. And if you've been following along, there have been plenty of times where Apple has launched iPad Pros without a software update and made people wait. So if this was just another minor update, why would they delay it this time, especially after not releasing an iPad last year and the sales being so poor. We know that this is going to be a major redesign like we had in 2018 and I am excited for some of the hardware updates, especially new cameras and finally getting rid of that portrait place camera, which is ridiculous if you use it with the magic keyboard, making it look like you're flat out ignoring whoever you're talking to. It will be in landscape and we know that we're going to get a much improved Apple Pencil and potentially wireless charging, but those things don't really excite me too much. What makes me really optimistic is the new Magic Keyboard and what it is going to do for the iPad. Back in 2022, a few years after the original Magic Keyboard, Apple was granted a patent for a new Magic Keyboard, one that has a special trick up its sleeve. As soon as you attach it to the iPad, bam, you get a full MacBook experience on your iPad. And you saw it right there in that patent. Man, that is exactly what I want. And the only reason that it's not already here is because Apple hasn't wanted it to be available. They would much rather have you buy both a MacBook and an iPad because they both have their strengths and their weaknesses. And for the iPad, the main weakness now is just software. Overall, I would say that it is a much better device than a MacBook. Now, sure, it will not replace an M3 Max MacBook Pro, but most people aren't buying those. Ever since the M1, which was faster than most of the Intel MacBooks and costs way less, the average person doesn't really need a super high-end Mac. And even if you're doing photo or video editing, coding, music production, or other tasks, they do the job well. And now that we have the M3 chip, it is absolutely incredible. And a fanless M3 Air can beat out an M1 Pro MacBook Pro which cost twice as much just a few years ago. And even though I love my MacBooks, you do not have a touchscreen and you don't have good cameras that are very useful for a bunch of stuff. You don't have LiDAR for those that need it and you can't just hold it in your hand and use it like a tablet. An iPad that could run macOS would literally kill the MacBook for a lot of people, which is why Apple hasn't allowed it yet. But as sales are dropping off like a rock, they have to do something. And so many people have already bought a MacBook and they are not in the market for one. So now is the perfect time. And the other trick up their sleeve is the fact that it will require the new expensive keyboard in order to make this happen. The current one costs $299 or $350 for the larger size, which is insane. And I really hope they don't raise the price, but we already know that these new iPads will be more expensive than the older ones. By the time you buy both and potentially the Apple Pencil, you are spending more money than you would on an equivalent MacBook. And when most people wouldn't be buying one or another iPad, this could actually convince people to drop that hard earned cash or credit to buy it. If Apple doesn't botch this again, it will be the actual master of all devices, the actual computer and a tablet with the full benefits of both. And I am really, really excited for it. Let me know your thoughts down below and if this would get you to finally upgrade your iPad. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out the latest info we have right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.